friend of mine, Bob Null, N4QR, had compiled a book back in the 50s and 60s, I believe. And um, Bob is 82 now, I believe, and he, uh, he used to distribute this book. And uh, there was some folks that really enjoyed uh, these little projects that he came up with. And these are mostly QRP transmitters. Now, Bob still runs these things, and he's on every day using these little CW tube-type transmitters. So I, he gave me a copy of the book, and I really treasure it. And I'm going to go through it real quick and let you look at some of the schematics and information he has here. Um, I'm not going to comment a whole lot about it, but if you see something of interest, you can just hit your pause button. And if you want to, you can use a feature of Windows called the snipping tool. Just uh, look that up. It's built into Windows, and you can bring that up and snip anything you want and then copy and paste it or simply print it out. So uh, some of these projects use a, a, a number 10, a type 10 tube triode. They look like a light bulb, a really old-time tube. And this is a little QRP transmitter for 80 meters. And apparently it has a high impedance output here for uh, a 260-foot wire antenna. I'm going to have to uh, fold it back here so we can see the uh, next page. Um, here we have a 160 transmitter. using a 6BA6 and a 6AQ5 tube. And here we have a, um, a little 6L6 single tube CW transmitter. Check this out. 40 turns of number 30 wire on a plastic drinking straw. And he designed these to be made from parts that you could find easily at like ham fest. Here's a little uh, 40 meter CW transmitter, a 6L6, another drinking straw here. And this is, by the way, this is the crystal symbol he uses for the crystal. Here we have a uh, a uh, 60Q6 crystal oscillator. I believe that's a TV sweep tube. And this is a transmitter. Low power, but uh, you can work the world with CW with these things. And let's see. Here we have... Uh, this is a, the simplest power supply that you can put together. There's no choke. It's just the filter capacitor. And use that to power your little transmitters. Here's a um, a little transmitter for 40 meters using one tube, a two a two section tube, half of it for the oscillator and the other half for the amplifier. 50 ohm output. Here's a um, 80 meter three tuber, as he calls it. I hear him uh, on the air on 40 meters a lot, running two tubers and three tubers. That's what he he talks. He always tells folks what he's running. Um, here we have a 160 junk box special, 35 watts output. He says a 6L6 oscillator and a 6BG6. Final tube. Now here's a beauty. This is a one tube, 160 meter transmitter using a 6L6. 
Now here's a little, uh, I think 1750 meters is, uh, uh, they call that the free band or something that you can operate uh, for a real short distance with really short antennas and low power. And he, uh, he builds this as a code oscillator. So you could, if you had a radio that could receive that, you would be able to practice your code. Now here's a little bit more sophisticated power supply for running your transmitters. This is a multi-purpose one. It's got three DC outputs and they're all regulated, well filtered. Here's another power supply. A little simpler with a single 425 volt output, a pi section type filter. Now here we have solid state rectifiers and a, uh, a little uh, power supply, radio shack parts. All right, this is um, a plan that was in 1930s. Uh, QST 1929 and the handbook in 1930 uh, that he modified. Uh, it's an 80 meter transmitter using a, uh, a VT52 or a number 10 tube again. Some details on how to, how to wind the coils. Here we have a uh, 40 meter three tuber. This is a big one here, 807 final, and um, a 4EH7 oscillator and buffer. I'm not familiar with 4EH7. Now, it tells you here about using a uh, uh, can of pet milk uh, can as a shield around the 807. And here we have a... Uh, Old-fashioned crystal EBS receiver, emergency broadcast system, I believe, that you could, uh, <laughs> which no longer is in operation, but you could receive AM radio with it. And uh, he tells you how to wind the coil here and uh, so forth. Now, let's see, here we have a neon bulb code practice oscillator. That's about as simple as it gets, an NE2 bulb, and uh, 300 volts on him. Here is his two tube. Now, I've heard him use this on the air quite a bit. I think it's the one he uses. 6L6s. And I think this is the final uh, co-practice oscillator using a uh, 2N292, probably about any little uh, bipolar NPN transistor would work using a, a double A cell battery. And so there it is. Now that's all there is folks. And uh, I'll treasure this for many years and pass it along to somebody uh, someday, but uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I don't, Bob doesn't do email, so don't bother trying to ask him any questions, but uh, just look the schematics over and uh, have fun. 73 from N4LQ.